theme. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we? Let's talk more so. about uh, that emotional outburst from Serena Williams over the weekend. She received a £13,000 fine. Uh, but well, she's won 23 Grand Slams over the years, but she called the umpire a thief and a liar during the US Open Women's Final. Now, this has caused a lot of debate amongst us as well mm. and all over social media. And as Sally said, it's overshadowed Naomi Osaka's first big title win. Um, Serena's received lots of support, including that from the Women's Tennis Association. Here's a reminder of what happened courtside on Saturday evening. Code violation, coaching, set. warning, Mrs. Williams. We don't have any code, and I know you don't know that, and I understand why you may have thought I, that was coaching, but I'm telling you it's not. I don't cheat to win. I'd rather lose. I'm just letting you know. Violation, record abuse, point penalty, Mrs. Williams. You owe me an apology. I have never cheated in my life. I have a daughter, and I stand what's right for her, and I've never cheated. You owe me an apology. <laughs> Verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. Game penalty, Mrs. Williams. There are men out here that do a lot worse because I'm a woman. Because I'm a woman, you're going to take this away from me? It was obviously very, very heated on court. So we're asking if the fine does match the crime. Let's talk to George Belshaw, who's a tennis reporter for the Metro newspaper, and Blair Imani, who's an activist and author. Good morning to you both. Um, briefly, let's just set out where you stand on this. Blair, what, what's your view? I think that Serena has dealt with a myriad of sexist remarks, derogatory comments, racist remarks throughout her career. And I think in the heat of the moment, she couldn't swallow another injustice, and so I think that the passion was present. But we have to remember, tennis isn't golf. Players do talk on the field. There was a conversation between her and the umpire, so I think it's being blown a little, a little bit out of proportion. Uh, and I'm disappointed in the media for overshadowing the young woman's victory, Nadia. Okay, George. Hi. Yeah, um, I agree with the last point about uh, it overshadowing uh, Osaka's victory. Uh, I personally think the umpire was kind of within his rights to hand out the three code violations. Uh, I think Williams uh, overreacted to the first one. She took it very kind of personally. Um, I do understand there's lots of reasons why she might have reacted that way, um, but I think the umpire was kind of within the letter of the law, uh, within the rules of the game, uh, and he treats most other players the same way, really, so I think it was fair enough. OK, um, both listen to these, view these viewers' comments we've had this morning, if you wouldn't mind. Um, LMC says Serena was treated far more severely than male tennis players are for the same offences. Brian Walsh says, I don't think it was sexism that called her, caused her to be penalised. There is inconsistency in many sports. Uh, what do you make of that, Blair? I think that, you know, it's rather interesting to see the different proportions of people and their genders and who's calling what sexism. I, I think that, uh, not I think, I know that human psychology, anger comes from a feeling of being wronged. And so I think that Serena's passionate and eloquent rage when she spoke out was completely justified. And we have to, again, uh, know that she's not going to create sensationalism and controversy out of nowhere. She's a very successful woman. She is a new mother. She has a new marriage. I think that she felt wronged and she spoke up against it. Um, but I do think that she's being treated differently. She has been throughout her career and, you know, most recently with the uh, the cat suit fiasco, not being allowed to wear the uniform of her choice. Um, um, George, what do you make of then the use of or Serena Williams saying this was sexism when also on, on at the same time she broke court violation, she broke some rules. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I think there's a lot of inconsistencies uh, within tennis, um, and it's certainly something we need to look at, like, you know, our umpires kind of treating men and women differently. Um, but I do genuinely, genuinely believe in the case of this umpire, uh, in the case of Carlos Ramos, he, he treats men and women the same. He's a very, very kind of strict rule enforcer. Uh, we've seen him kind of have altercations with many of the top guys. You know, Novak Djokovic, he called on a coaching violation earlier this well, year, for to example. Pick you up, to pick you up on that, George, um, he also has been accused of being inconsistent as well because when, during that quarterfinal with Novak Djokovic and Kane Shikori, only Djokovic was issued a warning there when Kane Shikori also threw a racket down. Yeah, so I, I was actually referencing his quarterfinal of the French Open, where right. he was giving a coaching violation. 
Um, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right on the Nishikori one. Um, from Ramos's perspective there, he didn't see Nishikori's dropped racket, so he didn't give the violation. Um, and this is what I kind of mean. I don't, I don't, I think when he sees things, he calls them out, and he's very consistent in his application. The problem is an umpire has to see an awful lot, and I think with the coaching violation particularly, that's where uh, there's a lot of debate about this because Muratoglu, who's Serena Williams's coach, he kind of said, yes, uh, I did coach. You know, everyone's coaching all the time, um, and it's just kind of random when the umpires see it. So I think there, what, there needs to be a look at that rule. What do you both make of the Women tennis, Women's Tennis Association, which has weighed into this row? And I'll quote um, the statement released overnight. The WTA said yesterday brought to the forefront the question of whether different standards are applied to men and women in the officiating of matches. Blair. I think that when we look at how tennis was, you know, originated, who's been historically playing it, it hasn't been people who look like Serena Williams and it hasn't been, uh, you know, equally applied in, in terms of the, the refereeing or the umpiring. And so I think that there needs to be a sort of a referendum or an inquiry into how these rules are applied and perhaps reevaluated. But I do believe in women standing up for women. Uh, so it's very pleasing to me to see the Women's Tennis Association standing by Serena Williams. George, the WTA, right to wade in? Yeah, I mean, they're right to look into this uh, charge of kind of inconsistency between how men and women are treated on court. I think everyone would welcome that. You know, I want everyone to be treated fairly on a tennis court. In this particular instance, though, I do, as I've said before, genuinely believe Ramos has applied the rules how he does in every other match, male or female. George Blair, it's good to talk to both of you. George Belshaw, Metro Online tennis reporter, and Blair Imani, um, activist and author. Thank you very much for talking to us on Breakfast. Uh, goodness me, you're getting in touch on this this morning. Lots of views, completely divided, as, as Naga was just saying. Paul says, shame on you, Serena Williams. This makes a mockery of any serious attacks against sexism. Well, Stephen Kendrick has picked up on, on almost the WTA's point, saying, yes, she was fairly disciplined, but she was also right that the following of the rules by umpires must be consistent. No difference should there be between the men's game and the women's game. And Suzanne makes the point that uh, we were saying with Sally earlier that, uh, yes, we, we are talking about Serena Williams' outburst and frustration but let's focus on Naomi Osaka's first win and give her a chance to shine. Yes, congratulations, Naomi Osaka. Thank you so much for getting in touch today.